as they said bye to me at the hotel that I stayed at the night before we drove to Paris Island. They were upset. I think we were all just kind of understanding that we didn't really know what was in store. I took my time in telling them bye and I reassured them that everything was going to be okay and I was going to do my best and we didn't know what was going to come but as we always have been we were going to be there for each other. Okay, this is August the 9th. Hey everybody, how are things in South Carolina? I can't believe I am finally here. Let me just give you some details of Northern Marcia. It gets about 115 to 125 during the hottest part of the day. Ha ha. It's kind of cool though, even though it's really tough and hot, we are all going through it together. Time is actually passing pretty quickly here. I don't think it is for you, but I hope so. <laughs> I miss Sadie. Ha, tell everyone thank you for thinking and praying for me. Tell them I'm doing just fine. It's a weird feeling hugging a loved one for the last time and stepping onto a bus off of American soil and, and not knowing if you're ever going to return to give them another hug or tell them you love them. So as we pulled away out of the parking lot, it was just we knew what our job was and, and where we were going and the risk involved, but it's still very hard and very surreal. Um, we were at church and um, after church we had gotten word that Nick, Kyle's buddy that was on the roof with him had been injured and um, so we knew that they were together all the time you know they would stand post together and we never check our answer machine and on our, on our home phone and so I went over there and punched the answer machine and the message was on there Tuesday 12 09 a.m. Yes, this is Gunnery Sergeant Horton, United States Marine Corps here in Quantico, Virginia. Sir, ma'am, if you would, if this is James and Robin Carpenter, uh, please give us a call at your earliest convenience or as soon as you hear this mess. Our number here, folks, is... Robin was very upset, and I knew that, that I had to be strong, okay? I had to, you know, start coordinating the travel to get up to Washington and just be strong for the, the entire family. I had to kind of prop them up. And, you know, nobody ever saw me cry, but they didn't see me in bed at 2 o'clock at night either. I remember opening uh, my eye, <laughs> and uh, I was on the fifth floor, the recovery uh, floor at Walter Reed, and it was around Christmas time. And the first thing I saw in my first memory was looking, on my, looking up at my hospital wall, and I saw de Christmas decorations and stockings that were hung. And so my first memory of waking up from being in Afghanistan was, yep, my mom definitely hung stockings on my hospital wall. She took over as absolutely my caretaker when I was injured. And from the moment I opened my eyes, uh, she hasn't left my side since. And they're just not really words. I mean, she's my mom. I, I love her more than life itself, so. This card reminded me of you so much. You always had a cape on. Batman, Spider-Man, Superman. That's what you are now, Superman. I'm, I wasn't surprised at all that she kept everything. Uh, my mom's done a great job, and, and as far as the letters go, and, and all that kind of combined, I'm just glad we have it, and I'm glad we have those memories to always keep and share. I'm glad we have those things to look back on and, and have those memories. And obviously we'll always keep that. So, you know, there'll always be things that'll be forgotten and be history, but I'm just glad we have it. And I'm glad we have those memories to always keep and share. Somebody had called Kyle on, I believe, Thursday. And they told him that um, the president would be calling on Monday. You know, the phone rang at 1.35 and it was, you know, a lady on the phone and she just said, 
you know, Kyle, is this Kyle Carpenter and can you hold for the President of the United States? Yes, sir. Fine, sir. How are you? This isn't changing us, just good old family from middle of nowhere, South Carolina. So, you know, we're still the same people. Obviously the spotlight is on us right now and will be for a while. But when it all comes down to it, I, I raised my right hand and, and I went over there knowing the risk. And, you know, I'm proud of what I did, but that doesn't define me. I'm more proud of just being a Marine. Right now I'm in school and I'm just a, a normal college student and that's what I'm gonna keep doing for next three, four, five years. I wanted to, to be a Marine first while I could and while I had the opportunity and while my body would allow it. So I did that and, and now it's just looking forward and I'm gonna just try to impact the world and the people around me in the most positive way I can and try to be a good person and, and do good things. Pretty cool, your brother getting the Medal of Honor. Price? Yeah, Paul, it is. We're very proud of you, son. Dear Kyle, well, it's crucible time. Can you believe it? I know your days have been long, but I know in some ways you can't believe you have made it this far. I have really been thinking and praying about the crucible. I know you are ready to think how you will feel at the end of those 54 hours. What you will have accomplished in that, that amount of time will be what most people do in a lifetime. You should be so proud of yourself. I know you will use every single aspect of everything you have learned. What an awesome feeling to see your sense of accomplishment. I read all the events are named after Medal of Honor recipients and that the drill instructors will take the time to read the citation of the award. I can't imagine the emotion to hear about the ones that have gone before you. On that final march, every step of the others that have gone before you, you will think of them. You will have done something so awesome that so few have done. You will remember that march the rest of your life. 